master these building blocks and you'll be able to animate any page like a pro web developer. Animations are a critical part of being a web developer. Some are important for the user experience, while others can make your page really pop and stand out. We'll start simple with hover states, which you'll want for pretty much any interactive element on your page. Then we'll work our way up to more, building more complex animations with transitions and finally with keyframes. By the way, my name's Aaron. I'm a developer working at a tech company in Silicon Valley. I should say now that if you want to make animations but don't like CSS, you actually don't need it. There are libraries that do everything I'm about to show you now, and I'm going to make another video on animation libraries soon. Now let's dive in. Alright, I've already got a pretty decent looking page here. A simple app where I click a button and a rocket blasts off. On the left here I have my HTML. I'm already importing one style sheet, but I'm gonna type the rest of the style here, uh, the style that is, that's important to the animation. I have a div for the text button, the rocket itself, as well as the platform, which are all over here. The first thing I'm gonna wanna do, and anytime you have an interactive element, you're gonna wanna do this, is give my button some animation. Right now when I hover over, absolutely nothing happens, so you can't even tell this is a button. To fix that, I'm going to add a CSS class with the hover pseudo class, which is indicated by the colon. This defines all the styling for when my mouse is within the area of the button, also known as a mouse enter event. When I'm hovering, I want my margin to move down by 5 pixels, cursor is going to change to a pointer, and the background color is going to change to a nice gold. When I save that and refresh, you'll see that the hover state is working. But the transition's a little bit jumpy. This is where our first major animation attribute comes in, which is the transition attribute. I'm going to create a class selector for my button class with the transition property inside and you'll see that three values are here. This is actually shorthand to quickly define my entire transition in one line. If I save and refresh, you'll notice that my transition is now super smooth, both between the colors and the two positional states. The transition property is good for just that. When I have two different states and two different styles, it will create a seamless transition between the two. Since the transition shorthand is so important, let's take a moment and step through each part of it. First, the transition property uh, usually comes first. What property is changing? What property will this transition be applied to? Transition speed is pretty straightforward. How many seconds does the transition take? And finally, the speed curve function, which specifies how is the transition going to progress from beginning to end. Uh, a few examples of speed curves are ease in, ease out, and ease in out, although there are around six or seven of them in total. Instead of trying to explain what each does, I'll show you an example here. Uh, I have an app called Tree Simulator where different trees grow and have applied a different speed curve to each tree. You can see ease in is the slowest to start, while ease out is the slowest to end, and ease in out is a happy medium. Next, I want my button to actually do something. Let's style the rocket class by adding a transition for three seconds that's easing out as my rocket takes off. Next, I'm gonna create a class that doesn't yet exist in my DOM, for flying. This is going to be the final state from where my rocket ends up, which is at the end of the three seconds defined in my transition property. Finally, I need to actually apply this class to my rocket, and I'm going to do that dynamically using JavaScript and an on-click attribute. Here's my function definition down between my script tags. I'm using a query selector to select the rocket class from my DOM. Next, I'm going to add flying to the rocket element using vanilla.js. 
or just regular JavaScript. Finally, I have to add an onClick attribute to my button div, which will apply the function when I click. If I save that, I already have a great animation. So what's happening here with the transform property, which is the next super important element of CSS animations? Let's make sure we understand transform functions, which look like functions in any other programming language, but they're actually CSS and allow us to modify an element on the DOM. First, the scale function, which takes one argument. It's a multiplier based on my original size. Here, I'm making my avocado bigger, which I wish I could do in real life. Rotate takes a number with degrees. Don't forget the units or it won't work and does pretty much what it describes. Translate is super important. It allows us to move an element's position and we don't even have to have an absolute positioning. Uh, so it works on any element. And note that there's two different translate functions, X and Y, uh, which I can use separated by a space. And this goes for all transform functions. I can put multiple. When I have two functions, I can also write the shorthand, which is using two arguments, which is functionally the same as the one I just showed. Skew is another example with skew x and skew y. Let's keep going. I'm gonna bring my rocket back by refreshing. And what I now wanna do is fade in my button when my page loads, because you'll notice everything is just preloaded and it's not very exciting when I first load up my page. I want a few things to happen. So what I'm gonna do is create a custom fade in class that will apply to my button that's gonna start as invisible. I'll accomplish the invisible aspect by setting opacity to zero on my button class. I also want my text to fade in, so I need both to set that to opacity zero as well as create the same transition property on my text class. If I wanna be really specific and only uh, have my text fade in with opacity and not have that transition apply to anything else, I can explicitly set the attribute within the transition shorthand. Finally, I actually need to write a JavaScript function for that fade in, which will apply the style as non-opaque. Next, I need to call the fade in function with JavaScript and also define it. I've created a function that takes in a class name so I can apply it to any class as well as a delay in milliseconds. So a thousand milliseconds would be one second. Under the hood, I have a set timeout function which basically just calls this inner function after a delay, um, which is just selecting an element from the DOM and setting its opacity to one by manually setting the style opacity. So you don't need to apply a new class. You can just set the style element and transition will still work. Okay, so I'm fading in button after one second, fading in text after half a second. If I save that and refresh, we'll see a lot more is automatically happening when I load the page. Time for the final section, using keyframes. Keyframes give us a lot more control over our animations. You'll see I have a nice relaxing ocean scene here on the right. On the left, I've got my HTML for the text button. And then the three main components of my page, the ship, sun, and water, which I don't have any animations over here yet. Since we already know how to do the button, let's get that out of the way first. Let's add the transition property to our button class along with a hover. This is kind of a shortcut that you see a lot with button hover states, which is just to change the opacity. This means you don't have to go searching for the perfect 
second background color. Okay, next let's make a keyframe rule with the at keyframe syntax. I'm gonna name my keyframe function embark and just go ahead and start writing the code. First, from, which is the original state of my element I'm applying this keyframe to. And then two. So in this case, I'm basically setting the right to zero, which is a property I can only set on absolutely positioned elements. If I want my ship to be all the way on the right in the beginning state of my animation, I'm going to make right zero. But again, there has to be an absolute positioning on whatever I, I apply this animation to. The two state is where everything's going to end up. So if I want right 100%, that means it's going to be completely to the left. Just think of the right as the distance from the right side of the page. Okay, I've created my keyframe called embark, and what I'm now gonna do is actually use it inside of a class called departing, which is not yet applied to any element. Using the animation syntax is a lot like the transition syntax, where it's a shorthand that represents multiple underlying rules. Okay, a quick overview of the animation shorthand. First and most importantly, animation name, which is defined in our keyframe rule. We always need animation duration with the syntax 5s or whatever number you want to put. We can optionally have a second s number, uh, which represents the delay. And then there's several more properties, two of which I've outlined here, but you can find the full list at w3schools com if you just google it and it's also a good place to find the transition shorthand similar to how i'd use a variable in any programming language i'm using the embark keyframe as the first shorthand word then for s as my animation delay property and finally forwards the animation fill mode Forwards means that the animation will only occur once and then it will remain in the final state. This will become really clear when we see the animation in action. I'm going to add some JavaScript to actually apply my departing class to my ship element. And finally, I'm going to add a on click HTML attribute, which calls my depart function. When I save that and refresh, my ship is departing. It looks pretty good and it's very smooth. My ship is not returning unless I refresh the page. That's because the animation is playing in order one time and then it is remaining in the two state. So far what we've done, we can also do with a transition and transform. So it doesn't seem that exciting, but we're really just scratching the surface with what we can do with keyframes. Let's keep going and make this page even more animated. Okay, full speed ahead with continuing to animate our page. Time for some more keyframes. Another reason keyframes are awesome is because you can reuse them as many times as you want and have them behave in slightly different ways. I'll show you what I mean now. Let's make a new keyframe called float. Instead of using from and to, I'm going to be more specific. In fact, with keyframes, you can use as many states as you want when you specify them by percentages. Here I'm saying I want float to have no translate y change at 0 and 100%, which is defined by my animation duration. So if my animation is 4 seconds, at second 0 and second 4, my y will be in the default location. Halfway through my animation, translate y is going to be at 5 pixels, the y maximum. 
Everything in between is going to be smoothly animated with our keyframes. I have the rule here. You can probably guess I'm going to want to apply it to my ship class. Using the animated shorthand, I want my entire float animation from 0 to 50 to 100% to occur in two seconds. Now you'll see that I have a keyword for infinite, which is my animation iteration count. So my ship will continuously animate as long as my page is open. This is something we can't do with transition and we can only do with keyframes and it's really cool. I'm going to save that and refresh and now we can see my ship is floating down in the bottom right corner. I mentioned earlier that we can reuse this animation as many times as we want. It looks a little bit weird with the water still and the ship floating, not too realistic. So let's also add that float animation to the water with a slight offset of 0.1 seconds. So it's not exactly in line with the ship. Let's see how that looks when I refresh. Our page is looking great, but just for fun, let's add one more keyframe. I'm going to add a keyframe called spin, which rotates an element around and around from zero to 360 degrees, being a full rotation. I should probably say if it wasn't already obvious, from is a 0% and to is 100%. So if you write either, it'll do the same thing. So, so we know what the rotate transform function does. And we know keyframes is going to animate from and to and everything in between. Down here, I've got my sun CSS rule that is using the spin keyframe at a 30 second animation interval for infinite, similar to my float. If I save and refresh, my sun is very smoothly rotating. Keyframes can actually get a lot more complicated than this because we can have infinite states. So we can have 0, 20, 30, 40, etc. And we can have more than one style attribute within each state. So you can just think of all the possibilities that can happen with this. The best way to learn is to mess around with it. Try to make a few of your own keyframe rules and keep in mind that you can reuse them in your application. So if you make one cool one, then you can use it on multiple elements and customize it with the animation attribute. Now you know more than enough to be dangerous, so get out there and start animating. If you learned something from this video, leave a like, and if there's a topic you wanna to see in the future, leave a comment. Until next time.